The Reloaded Podcast is a fictional podcast using real-life subjects. It will be offensive to overly sensitive, safe place individuals. Trigger words or phrases will be used, and this is not a podcast for children, meaning all you motherfuckers probably under the age of 25 these days. None of the content reflects the opinions of the creators, but is a reflection of a society that has been told to shut up by the everyone gets a trophy generation. If you are easily offended, don't listen. You've been warned. Here we go again, John. Yep, good times on Reloaded. Although we're a little sad, as our beloved Bruins went seven games and lost, I'll congratulate the Blues. Their goaltender was the reason they won, because in just about every other category, they were really our bitches throughout that series. As depressing as it is, they still won, Tom. Yes, you're right. They earned it, just like we did in 2011. A hot goaltender and enough goals to win it. Here's the weird subject I want to go over, though. Can't wait to see what you found, Sherlock. Shoot. So Blues fans have this little cheer or whatever the hell it is on the internet. Pound LGB. Tommy, it's a hashtag. Get with the new lingo. Nope. Pound me too. Pound LGB. I'm old school, motherfucker. Okay, whatever. So I keep seeing LGB, LGB, LGB. I'm wondering... Why does St. Louis hate the tranny so much? Oh, Lord. Along with the queers, the hermaphrodites, and everything else on a complicated password. I don't think they hate the trannies, Tom. Well, why always pound the lesbians, gays, and bisexuals, but not the other assorted stack of sex people? I believe it's short for Let's Go Blues. I stand corrected, but I still think their victory song's a little in line with the LGBTQRSTUVWXYMZ group. We got anything else, Tom? Good grief. It sucks we lost. But I'm proud of the Bruins. Don't be like those Boston haters. We're so fucking pitiful, they care more about a Boston team losing than their actual own team winning. Fuck them. Sometimes you're right, John. When you listen. Plus, the Pats are gonna shove another Super Bowl championship up Goodell's ass in the near future. We'll be alright. Tom fucking Brady, baby. So getting beyond that... I got a little bit of an embarrassing story, John. My favorite. Does it involve trannies again? Fuck you, John. No, but it does involve a possible hookup gone way wrong. Hold on. I gotta get something over here. Yeah, I'm gonna come back. What are you doing, asshat? What the fuck? We're in the middle of a podcast here. I had to refill my beer. I enjoy your embarrassing stories. So I went out the other night. No plans for much. I grabbed a giant shake. Aren't you lactose intolerant? Oh, yeah. But I love shakes. They just don't love me back. Hold on. You already have been drinking? When ain't I drinking? True. So I started walking, drinking my shake. And as I'm finishing up this amazing shake for what would be a possible butt explosion at my place, I see these two chicks giggling at me. At first, I thought I may have a booger on my face. But no, they were actually into me. I walked over and said, I'm Tommy. They said they were looking for a threesome. I quickly asked if they had dicks. Yeah, after your experience, I would. Dicks or not, she or he or it was smoking. These two were average, but a threesome is a threesome. What the hell kind of ice cream shop were you at? I did walk into the quote-unquote red light district. Show hookers, Tom. They were hookers. Let's suspend disbelief for a moment and pretend... These two just wanted a threesome because I'm hot. Whatever you say. Anyway, we grabbed a six-pack and headed to their place. I took care of some pre-event business. You paid for sex. In reality, who doesn't? You got a point. Go on. So things are going well. I downed a few beers to hopefully not blow my love yogurt too soon. And we get undressed. They were all over me, John. Boobies touching my chest while they're touching each other's chests. One chick sits on my face while the other goes down. I was living a horny man's dream. If it weren't for the thought of your naked ass, I'd have a full-on boner right now. If it helps, think of it like porn. You're not so much paying attention to the guy with hairy balls as much as the chick's getting plowed. Wait a moment. Let me concentrate. Okay, continue. I never had an experience like this. The girl on top came. I launched... 
And while I would have been good with that, they switched, saying it was her turn to come. The chick that was sucking my dick got on my face, and the other one went down, trying to get my flaccid little ding-ding going again. And it didn't take much. That's when this whole thing started to turn. Oh, no. I was darting my tongue in and out of this other chick, and the other one was playing with my dick and balls, sucking like I'd never been sucked before. Then she sticks a finger in my ass. I'm gonna say, in most situations, I probably would have screamed like a little bitch, or the same way when I get a prostate exam. This is about to go bad, isn't it? Yes. The other chick had apparently had hers. Now they were both around little Tommy. One on my shaft, the other cradling my balls. And then what I thought was a finger again wasn't. It was a tongue in my butthole. At that moment, my stomach went south. I started to sweat, trying to hold back what I thought was going to be a giant fart. I couldn't hold it anymore. Mount Tommy erupted from both ends. Oh my. I came into the one chick's mouth. And I chocolate napalm the other. She gets up and I was about to make a racist joke about blackface. But realized it was probably going to be inappropriate. I think I'm going to puke. The other chick realized what happened and started slapping me. Calling me a gross fuck, etc. I curled up in your ball, lifting my legs, trying to protect little Tommy from getting slapped all over the place. And I started to laugh. When I did start to laugh, Torpedo 2 hit her right in the chest. Knocking her back a few inches. Time stood still. I'm telling you, it was like slow motion. As I lay naked looking at both chicks covered in my feces, I started laughing uncontrollably. I grabbed both knees and couldn't control my asshole anymore. A 12-pack and a giant chocolate shake launched out of my ass like a fucking fire hose, covering everything. I ran out of the house with what I thought was all my clothes, but was just my underwear and their dresses. I limped home smelling awful in a tight, flowered dress. I'm not even sure what to say right now. Congratulate me on the threesome? Sure. It was still a threesome. And actually, in some countries, it was probably even more than a threesome. With what happened there. Well, see you next episode. All right. See you fuckers later. Yeah, yeah. Good times. That's gross, Tom. That's gross. Why don't you just read this one here, John? Okay. What the fuck is this, Tommy? Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Just read it. You fucker. Good and bloody tampons. For those days, that looked like a slaughterhouse movie between your legs. You can stick one of these bad boys up there and clean up that crime scene. Good and bloody tampons at a convenience store near you. Good job. That's fucking gross. Money's money. If you want to get your buzz on... With the cheapest beer possible, try Buzz Beer. It might taste like it was filtered through dirty socks, but for about 10 cents a can, you can't beat this swill. I can vouch for that. Hey, if you like what you just heard, please subscribe to Reloaded, the Boston Brew Podcast. And go ahead and share that thing. Spread it around like herpes. Mm-hmm.